Bloomberg Audio Studios. Podcasts, radio, news. Polaris Dawn Mission Commander Jared Isaacman joined Bloomberg Technology host Ed Ludlow to discuss his experience with SpaceX and the Polaris mission, when to expect Polaris 2, and his involvement in the Starship program. Let's take a listen to that conversation. Jared, now that you have had time to process and, and think, what is the conclusion you've reached about the significance of Polaris Dawn? What was the result of the mission and the experiment that you conducted? Oh, um, well, first, uh, one, sorry, I can't be there in person. Uh, I, I really would have liked to. Uh, second, I, I, to be honest, I can't say that I've had a lot of time to really uh, think and reflect since coming back. Um, it's been just kind of a whirlwind. We've uh, had a lot of, you know, uh, data reviews, debriefs, um, science research. I, we've, we've been kind of bouncing around a bunch and it's still ongoing for some time. So, um, but I will just say, I, I think Polaris Dawn was just, it, it was always meant to just be a small step in the right direction. Um, you know, a huge team effort to move the ball forward as part of the, you know, broader SpaceX vision of making life multiplanetary. So we've gone a little farther into space than we've been in a long time. We've tested out a new suit, um, which is just one small step in toward, in, you know, towards building a, uh, you know, a more scalable uh, suit that's capable of walking on, on the moon or Mars someday. Uh, you know, we tested out Starlink, which worked incredibly well uh, as an alternative pathway to mission control, which is also a step in the right direction off of lo legacy infrastructure. Uh, and then a lot of science and research experiments, right. which collected tons of data points on. But, you know, really, it's up to the researchers, the, um, you know, the principal investigators to kind of, um, you know, analyze that data and reach the right conclusions. But, but we're happy to support it. The, the milestones and mission goals were very different to Inspiration4, um, and, and I understand that. Was Were you more deeply integrated within the SpaceX org in how you worked with them in preparation relative to the Inspiration4 mission? Uh, for sure. I mean, the, the, the kind of phases you go through are all relatively the same. You know, there is kind of, you know, a mission design period where, you know, what's in the, the realm of possible, you know, um, and then you, you kind of move into training for it. Uh, the difference with, um, you know, Polaris Dawn is it's a development program it's as part of a, a broader development initiative of the Polaris program. So we actually had to build things. Uh, you had to build new suits. So, you know, we were there uh, working alongside the engineers from the first version uh, of the IVA space or of the EVA spacesuit to what ultimately became, you know, uh, qualification and testing of the, the ultimate flight articles that we took to the vacuum chamber that we took into orbit. So that's very different. You know, we were there as, you know, software is being developed to meet mission objectives or, you know, the, the ECLA system, the extra nitrogen tanks and oxygen tanks that we had, um, you know, to support pressurizing. So I would say like, yeah, we were much more deeply involved because the mission required us to be uh, because we were trying to do things that hadn't been done in a long time. Yeah, the stakes were so high. Uh, Jared, uh, you are not a SpaceX employee. No, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not a SpaceX employee. But how deeply are you involved in now the Starship program? Uh, not very um, involved. I mean, we're kept very well informed. Uh, I mean, we're ultimately going to fly it. Uh, so, you know, Polaris will be the first crew that will take, um, you know, Starship to orbit. So, um, so we we absolutely will are, are kind of kept informed, and that there will be a time where we will get, I think, very embedded in the development and testing when it actually comes, to, when when they're actually working on things that are, um, you know, most relevant for a human crew. You know, right now they want to get to orbit, uh, they want to come back and catch their you know, their, their booster and eventually their Starship, because that's how you achieve rapid reusability, which is so important if you're going to take Starship to the moon or Mars. Um, it needs to get fully topped off and refueled in low Earth orbit. So there are just some immediate priorities that come before. And like my attention would, would go towards Polaris 2, where we build off of Polaris 1 and, and we'll be, you know, kind of repeating the mission design, development uh, and training phases again. What is the timeline from here for the rest of the Polaris program? Well, I think the balance of uh, 
of this year is still very much like the the data review and debriefs. You know, what did we get right? What could we have done better? Um, and again, what is now in the realm of possible for the next mission? Because you're going to build off of this one. I think you know SpaceX was very quick to say on the you know on the X spaces after we came back that you know continuing to improve upon the suit, running at higher pressure. Uh, to minimize pre-breathe requirements, a portable life support system. I think those are all reasonably easy to predict, Um, you know, but we got to learn, you know, we've got to like really understand what we gathered out of this mission first. And uh, and I think that's the balance of this year. And then I expect probably early next year, we're going to start designing the next Polaris mission um, to, again, just kind of move the ball forward. And I I guess it would be an appropriate time to kind of, ask what the broader mission statement is for Polaris, the program at large, Jared. We're uh, we're really just trying to kind of accelerate, um, you know, SpaceX's timeline towards, you know, making life multi-planetary. Starship is the obvious vehicle to do that. Um, But we don't have Starship today. We have Dragon. So, and Dragon was initially developed to go from point A to B, from here to the space station and back and do it very well. And now we are taking that vehicle because it's here and there's not a lot of spaceship choices to work with. Like it is the best one to use as a development platform uh, to ultimately, you know, better prepare humankind when Starship comes online. So to give you examples, like we flew Starship uh, life support sensors on our Dragon mission. Like, um, you know, the the various sensors that detect, you know, oxygen levels, CO2 levels, um, you know, pressure levels, you know, these are these are our bank of sensors that are part of the ECLIS system. We're all Starship ones and not not Dragon ones. Um, you know, so that's that's kind of the idea um, is to, you know, bridge this massive gap from what we have today, with Dragon, which is which is an awesome spaceship, uh, but to Starship, which is going to be you know, a revolutionary step forward. Like it is a, it is a total game changer. And when it comes online, you know, we're going to very quickly be able to return to the moon and go to Mars and you're going to need suits. You're going to need new communication systems. There's a lot of things we're going to have to figure out because they're not planning to build, you know, three or four of them. They have two factories to build potentially hundreds of them. Right. Uh, That's the aim of Polaris is to kind of help. An, an approximation, please. When will you fly Starship? I, you know, I leave that to the uh, experts at SpaceX and Elon to kind of determine the timeline on it. Um, we'll we'll fly it as soon as it's ready. Um, but right now, we there's a lot we can do with Dragon, um, and, and that's why the first two Polaris missions were were designed for Dragon. Jared, what we want to do with this is help our Bloomberg technology audience around the world understand what is really happening inside of SpaceX. Explain it, what it's like working with the engineers and how important you feel this company is, not just to an industry, um, but I suppose, uh, as you put it, humankind's future outside of Earth's atmosphere. Uh, what an awesome question, right? Um, look, SpaceX is an extraordinary organization. Um, you know, since I've been 16, since I was 16 years old, I've been in, bu- in business and have worked with literally like thousands of companies, um, you know, I- across a, a lot of verticals, including defense aerospace. I was the CEO of a, de- uh, a defense aerospace company. I started for, you know, um, almost 12 years. And and I've never seen an organization like SpaceX. Uh, you know, there's a lot of a lot of companies that have a mission and vision statement on their website that no one cares about. I can tell you, there's 14,000 people who show up for work every day at SpaceX, and they believe that there is no greater impact they can make in the world than trying to make life multiplanetary because the world is a more interesting place when you can journey among the stars. I mean, they believe it. Um, they're some of the smartest people in the world, and they're very passionate about getting there as quickly as they can. Um, Every every question, every development initiative, every dollar that's spent, you know, has the question posed to it of will this help us get to Mars? Um, and that's applied to all the objectives that, you know, we assemble as part of the Polaris program. It's very cool to watch people work so quickly towards such an outrageous goal. And the vast majority of it is is privately funded. Um, I mean, it, you know, think about it. This is like a Manhattan Project level endeavor or take the space race of the 1960s. But without the four and a half percent of GDP 
uh, U.S. GDP being, you know, funded, um, you know, into NASA. It, it, it's largely a commercial private endeavor for the benefit of everyone. All that aside, I do want to say that, like, um, SpaceX isn't solving all, all of the world's problems, clearly. And, and, and even going to Mars, like, they may develop the, the optimal vehicle to take us there and back. But there are still, you know, like, who knows how many potential challenges that will exist on that journey there, making it a self-sustaining city and coming back. So what I think is so cool right. about SpaceX is they inspire so many other engineers, you know, scientists, researchers who start up different companies that follow SpaceX philosophies. Like it, it will take so many SpaceX-like companies to to make this a, a to make the world a much better place. Um, and they're just a great beacon that that is like inspiring many others to do the same. That's Jared Isaacman, Polaris Dawn Mission Commander, speaking with host Ed Ludlow. I'm Dan Schwartzman, and this is Bloomberg.